In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductionary offer. See the link in the description to sign up. The first appearance by a Caribbean team at the finals of a World Cup was in 1938, when Cuba beat Romania 2-1 in the round of 16, only to be routed 8-0 by Sweden in the quarterfinals. After World War II, the Netherlands' Antilles became the region's top side, benefiting from regular tours to Europe and qualifying for the 1952 Olympics. But the next country to qualify for a World Cup finals was Haiti in 1974. A golden generation of Haitians lost all three games to Italy, Argentina and Poland, but players such as the legendary striker Emmanuel Sanon still earned contracts in Europe. Four years later, in 1978, the Caribbean Football Union was formed. This would be the vehicle used by the Trinidadian football administrator Austin Jack Warner to join the upper echelons of world football and give Caribbean football a voice and power for the first time. The CFU's inaugural general secretary, Warner was elected president in 1983 and held the title for 28 years. And during that time, just two more Caribbean countries, Jamaica in 1998 and Warner's Trinidad and Tobago in 2006, reached the finals of a senior men's FIFA World Cup. But the real power wielded by the CFU and its president came off the pitch. In 1990, Warner was elected president of the wider North and Central American Football Confederation CONCACAF and used these twin positions to help swathes of tiny Caribbean islands achieve FIFA membership. Joining FIFA became particularly attractive for administrators after then-President Sepp Blatter introduced regular annual payments to all members through the financial assistance program. A quarter of a million dollars a year went a long way for islands such as Montserrat, which only had a population of 6,000 and no formal league. The development program Goal, an initiative by FIFA to assist countries around the world to construct their own football facilities, was also widely used and sometimes abused by Caribbean nations such as in Antigua and Barbuda, where a million dollars for an artificial football pitch simply vanished. The deal was simple, take the money, support Warner in all FIFA votes, and stay quiet. The Caribbean had 25 FIFA members, who were influential in choosing a World Cup host and, of course, a new president. With Warner becoming a FIFA vice president, the Caribbean's disparate islands had unprecedented influence, even though corruption allegations were never far away and progress on the pitch was slow. For instance, the flagship national competition, the Caribbean Cup, was never staged on official international breaks, so islands struggle to field their strongest 11s and develop. No Caribbean side has qualified for a World Cup since 2006. But headlines have still been made though, albeit off the pitch. At a meeting in Trinidad's capital port of Spain in 2011, it was revealed that CFU members were offered £40,000 by the Qatari Mohammed bin Haman to support his bid for the FIFA presidency. Warner was suspended over corruption allegations dating back to the 1980s and eventually resigned. His replacement, Geoffrey Webb, a banker from the Cayman Islands, moved the CONCACAF headquarters to his home island and in 2015 was indicted by the FBI on corruption charges. In 2016, Gianni Infantino took over as FIFA president. His ally, the Canadian FA president Victor Montagliani, took the same role at CONCACAF and shifted activities to Miami. A satellite office was set up in Barbados and the Caribbean's power was completely neutralised under the brand slogan One Conquer Calf. So, two Caribbean club competitions, the Championship and the Shield, continue, but the Caribbean Cup has not been staged since 2017. Under Warner, officials enjoyed the lavish excess bestowed on football bureaucrats as long as they at least entered the World Cup qualifiers. But no other senior activity was required to merit FIFA membership. Montagliani changed that. Tiny islands such as Montserrat now play regularly in the CONCACAF Nations League. Tightly controlled CONCACAF funds help with travel and matches are broadcast live on the internet, often for free. Under Montagliani, the regional CONCACAF Gold Cup was also expanded to 16 teams in 2019 and while some in the Caribbean welcomed those extra places as providing more opportunity for smaller countries, Others argued that a back door was now open for the larger nations in case the Caribbean became too strong. In 2019, half of the Gold Cup's finalists came from the Caribbean, but only two of the ten CONCACAF members not from that region missed out. And in the finals, Jamaica were allowed to host two matches, the only two actually staged in the Caribbean. The remaining 29 took place across the USA, Mexico and Costa Rica. 
So arguably, Warner's old fiefdom held too much sway in the region, but 31 of CONCACAF's 41 members come from the Caribbean. Nevertheless, the money is in the North and to a lesser degree Central America. And that feeling of emasculation and disenfranchisement deepened when plans for the 2022 World Cup qualifiers were leaked. Havoc imposed on the international calendar by coronavirus forced a contingency. Under the new proposal, the six CONCACAF members with the highest FIFA rankings this summer would go straight into the final group of six, known as the hexagonal, with the top three qualifying for Qatar. The remaining 29, mainly Caribbean countries, however, faced a dogfight, with the winners given a playoff against teams from another region. The plans caused uproar and were dropped for a new system. The five highest-ranked sides, the USA, Mexico, Costa Rica, Honduras and Jamaica, will now go into an eight-team octagonal, with the remaining teams fighting for three slots. Qualification does not start until next year, and only one of the six first-round groups is comprised entirely of Caribbean sides. But Curacao could spring a surprise. The winners of the last Caribbean Cup in 2017 are the heirs to the Antilles, which was politically disbanded in 2010, are now managed by veteran Gus Hiddink and are mining a huge diaspora in Europe for players. A now ratified change to FIFA's rules allows players aged under 21 with three or less caps for one country to switch nationality. Curaçao and other islands across the region are scouting Europe and North America for eligible players, but just as the playing field was getting more even, another blow has been delivered. CONCACAF rejigged qualifying for the next two Gold Cups and handed Qatar a guest spot to the final. In addition, off the pitch, seven people sit on the CONCACAF Council, but only three are from the Caribbean. And of five CONCACAF representatives on the FIFA Council, just two are from the Caribbean. A balance that once swung so heavily in the region's favour has now fundamentally shifted. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team. Plus, David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.